Hello, Ruger. Yep. That's our dog. Since you haven't heard me uh, say anything about our dog, we have a dog. We've had him for a few months now. He is a... Uh, I know he's got some lab in him. He's a mutt, but I th he's got some lab in him. Uh, I think he's got some boxer in him because he's really hyper and his tongue is really long. <clears throat> but anyway, uh, what's up everybody? Jared here with One of the Nations Rage. What a sloppy way to start out a vlog. It's okay, it's okay. Um, <clears throat> so in this vlog, I want to talk to you a little bit about uh, my job that I just got. I told everyone that I was going to do a vlog about work and the whole transition between being on workers comp for almost two years and then going back to work. So I want to talk about that. <clears throat> I have a few things that I'd like to let people know about. Um, not just the job that I'm currently doing, which by the way, uh, I don't work here. <laughs> I don't work there. Okay. All right. Here's what happened. So the vlog that I did last week, I told everyone that I had gotten a job. Well, I went to the orientation and the the type of work that it is, I would have no problem doing, um, which I don't know if, if you can actually see that or not, but I, I was going to work for Jippy, uh, Jiffy Lube, not Jippy, Jippy Lube? No, Jiffy Lube. I was going to be a lube technician and... Uh, Basically what that is is you you change oil, you work on brakes, you change other fluids out in cars. Uh, there's a long list of things that the lube technicians do to service vehicles at Jiffy Lube. And I was going to start the job yesterday. Well, you know, all that work, all that type of work that that field of work with cars and everything I love you know I have no problem working on cars I enjoy it I work on our vehicles I have a couple of videos of me working on our vehicles and uh, I've always worked on my cars whenever I've been able to do so I started working on cars when I started driving cars at the age of 16 so I'm happy with that kind of work However, there were some things about the job that I didn't like. Um, first of all, the pay starts out at minimum wage. Okay, and I was I was gonna live with that. I was gonna be willing to live with that, even if it was just something temporary, until I could find something better to do. I would have lived with the minimum wage. But then I found out that they couldn't even guarantee me more than 30 hours a week. And that there is what put a damper on everything and got me thinking, you know what, I, I think I'm worth more than that. So I want to try to find something else where I can work more hours and make more money um, to support my family, you know. So I actually, I started working yesterday and what I'm doing now is what I was doing two years ago. See, two years ago, I was a bank contractor, uh, and what that is is it's you're a contractor, you place bids on certain jobs for bank-owned properties, and the bank will pay you to do certain jobs for a particular property that they own, and it can range through all kinds of different things, and it, what are, it's. It comes down to what's known as property preservation and what that is is that you will do work on properties to maintain the upkeep of addresses or properties where no one is occupying them. They're bank owned so that means that they're, they're in between being put on the market or you know on one end 
it would be like a foreclosure. So if we started a, a property out, we would do a foreclosure. On the other end, we get the, the house ready for appraisal or auction or uh, being uh, put, put back on the market, you know, put in a realtor's hand. And some houses take years and years and years to go from point A to point B, but some houses take a week or two. It just depends on the house, it depends on the state of it and everything else. Um, so what, what we would do is, you know, any kind of repairs that need to be done, like roof repairs, uh, changing locks, um, check sheets, just going through properties, taking pictures, all kinds of stuff like that we do for the bank. And I was doing this job two years ago. And I, that's not even half of it. That's just everything I can think of at the moment. Winterizations, either you know what that is or you don't. <laughs> I won't go into the details of it. Um, I was doing this job two years ago and work slowed down. So I started trying to find a better job that I, that I could get more hours doing. And, you know, I, it killed me to to have to walk away from this job. I really enjoy it. I really love this kind of work. And I'll explain why in just a minute. But I need to explain this first. So work slowed down two years ago. I started looking for another job. I got hired on as a satellite technician for an anonymous company that I'm not gonna give you the name of. I was two weeks into training and that's when I injured my knee and I was put on workers comp. So after being on workers comp for two years, I started working yesterday. I had my first day yesterday and you know, I really enjoyed it. Um, I was really happy to be able to go back to my former boss, my former employer. And you know, I, I asked him, it wasn't an overnight thing, but I, we've been talking on and off for a while now about me coming back to work. And, you know, he's not as busy as he used to be whenever I first started working for him, but the work fluctuates. So I'm thinking that this is a short-term solution for me working and making an income. And the pay is very decent. It's very acceptable. I am 110% satisfied with the amount of pay and the work itself, like I said, I enjoy it very much. Uh, and, and that's another thing about the whole Jiffy Lube thing. It's not just Jiffy Lube. I don't have a problem with Jiffy Lube or anything else. I just don't like working for big corporations. And I know that sounds like a contradiction because if I'm working for a bank, then I'm obviously working for a huge corporation, but it's not the same. See, if you're a contractor, then you're not a direct employee. So you have liberation, you have liberties that regular employees do not have, in other words. So, I mean, you can look at, I, I could give you an example for just about any kind of job out there. And, you know, a lot of jobs will have two different types of positions. The work itself could be very similar, but one employee, one person doing the work could be a company employee for a corporation, and the other person doing a, the work could be a contractor. And in my opinion, you know, there are things that employees have, benefits and such, that make it worth your while to be an employee. But at, on the other end of the spectrum, being a contractor, I feel like you have more freedom um, and less stress overall when it comes to doing your job. And you're, you're not worried about, you know, a huge corporation carrying you, you know, just, you know, worrying about, you know, is this company just going to drop me one day? And just kick me to the curb. You don't have to worry about stuff like that when you're a contractor. I mean, you you have to be concerned about 
particular jobs, like the jobs themselves. And I won't go into any more detail about that. I'm just rambling now. But basically, that's that's what it comes down to. I would rather be a contractor and get paid by the job than to be an actual employee clocking into a, a time clock every day and not really not really having the freedom and the opportunity that I would have as a contractor. I love working in the field. I don't like working in a closed in environment. I don't like repetitive things, doing the same thing over and over again. I like, with this job, I like it because I go to a different house every day or multiple houses every single day. And I like that kind of work. Um, it's just, it doesn't get old. Like I said, it's different every day. It keeps you on your toes. It's fun work, so I'm happy with it. And yesterday went very well. Uh, it was quite an experience <laughs> going back to that kind of work after you know two years of not doing it. Um, I kind of I I did some things yesterday that I kind of regret doing that I wish I would have been more careful. At doing uh, we went to a property and we had to clean mold of all things out of a, a house and we used bleach to clean the mold off the walls and the ceiling and anywhere else where there was mold and I didn't uh, I didn't take the right measures to protect myself I used one of those cheap you know microfiber type respirators and safety glasses but I didn't have any you know special suit on or anything like that and before we were done I ended up being drenched in bleach and not only that the property that we were working on had been broken into several times so the windows were boarded over and there wasn't a lot of air circulating through the house so we had to spray down the whole top floor just about um, and all in the basement so I breathed in a lot of uh, chlorine fumes from the bleach and it just made me sick and so I just want to tell everybody out there that if you ever have to expose yourself to chemicals like that just make sure that you take the right precautions to protect yourself because you don't want to get poisoned from breathing in those noxious uh, fumes it's just it's it's awful you know it's volatile it's gross nasty stuff and it it will make you sick and today I'm dealing with that I didn't work today uh, that's that's not why I didn't work today I just had other reasons why I couldn't work today that I won't go into um, but so I wanted to let everybody know about that I'm working again um, things are gonna pick up with this job I'm told in another week or two when the new month starts some things will pick up and hopefully I can work every day and that's just fine with me like I said I love this kind of work uh, but another thing I wanted to let everybody know about is the truck driving thing now a little over a year ago I told everyone that I was looking into becoming a truck driver and I was going to try to get company sponsored training to become a truck driver and then I may have told everybody that, that I changed my mind about that because after all the research that I did and all the reviews that I read about it it's not a path that anyone should want to go down it, it's something that you know if you have no other choice that you might carefully carefully consider and be very cautiously optimistic about it but if you have another option you should probably take it well I do have another option now I actually have the money to pay for truck driving school so I don't have to worry about signing a contract for to a company and signing myself over to a company to train me to drive their trucks for them and I have done that I've looked into a private truck driving school it's in Rockdale um, it's a 
really well known one. It's a, a company that all the big truck driving companies seem to turn to to find new hires. And I went there, I took the tour. Um, <clears throat> I actually have a video of me going there the first time, or I had a video at one point of me going there and checking it out. Well, I went back, I talked to the recruiter, um, took the tour, and was actually getting ready to start classes. I would have started classes last Monday on the 16th of May, but it turns out that they don't want me to be there uh, for the simple fact that I am coming off of workers comp and I was later called after my visit and told that they they thought it would be a waste of time for me to pay that amount of money to learn how to drive a truck because they saw problems in my future if I did that because any truck driving company would look at the fact that I was on workers comp and I settled my case. I didn't go back to work for that company, but I settled my case. And my dispute with that is the fact that I felt like I couldn't go back and, and perform the same duties that I once did on that job, which is the truth because my knee would not hold up well to the type of work that I was doing at that job if I tried to go back. It was an option, per se, but I'm not willing to take that risk. My knee has already been through enough trauma, and I don't. I just really didn't think it would be a good idea to do that. So I settled. You know that the company handed me that option. I took that option. I thought it was the better road to take, out of the two. And so, anyway, what they're saying is that, with that being on my record. Any truck driving company would look at that and say, well, because he couldn't go back to that job and do those job duties, then he's not going to be able to do this job. And so he's going to be a liability and therefore we don't want him. We don't want to hire him. And I have my reasons of disputing that. I don't agree with that because, you know, I know that truck drivers do more than just drive. And I know that the physical side of their job is pretty demanding. You have to take a DOT physical. You have to prove that you can do it. I mean, you have to be in good shape. You can't have high blood pressure or anything else if you're going to be a truck driver. Um, but I just, I don't think that a truck driver would have as hard of a time physically doing their job as a satellite technician would have doing their job. I don't think that those jobs are equal at all. And I told the people at the truck driving school this, but they didn't seem to care what I was saying. Um, but they did give me some advice, okay? So here, here's where the turning point is, and this is where it gets a little bit positive again. They gave me some advice. They said, you should come to this school. Instead of getting a class A CDL, let us train you to get a class B CDL. And we, we feel through our experience that you would have a much easier time finding a job as a class B truck driver than a class A truck driver. So what's the difference? Well, the difference is that a class A truck driver drives an 18 wheeler, big rig, you know, semi, tractor trailer, whatever you want to call it. And <clears throat> their rig, is a lot bigger. They're, the trailers are usually 53 feet long. The tractor portion is, you know, it can vary depending on whether or not it has a, a big sleeper on it or no sleeper. Um, but let's just say that the average tractor trailer is 75 feet long. Okay. Well, a class B truck driver can range. It can be anything from, you know, driving a city bus, driving a school bus, driving a garbage truck, any kind of straight truck that is one piece can be considered class B as long as it's big enough to have, you know, multiple axles or air brakes or if it's over a certain weight limit, then it can be a class B truck. And <clears throat> Apparently, from what I understand, this might not always be the case, but uh, for the most part, 
class B drivers get paid by the hour and class A drivers get paid by the mile. Most class A drivers are regional drivers or over the road drivers, meaning that they will drive all over the continent of North America to deliver freight. Most class B drivers are local drivers or regional drivers. Most of them come home every night. They're home on the weekends. They get paid by the hour. Um, you know, it, it just seems like it's more suitable for me all the way around. And I actually just recently met a gentleman that has been a class B truck driver. He's been driving for over 20 years and he gave me some advice. And what's uh, really peculiar and ironic about this guy is that we have many commonalities. We share a lot of things that, that we have in common. His right knee was injured. He was on workers' comp for his right knee. <laughs> um, he hurt his back a couple of years before he hurt his knee. Same thing happened to me. <laughs> okay, If you go back into my history and dabble, then you'll see that before I ever had knee problems, I had back problems. Um, there's just so many things that, that I have in common with this guy. It's uncanny. He's older than me, obviously, but there's just a lot that we have in common. He gave me some advice. He told me that if I was going to consider being a truck driver, that, you know, hands down, absolutely, Class B would be the way for me to go. So I'm going to look into this Class B. I think that, you know, I can't, <clears throat> I can't help but agree with everybody. Uh, the thing about the, the truck driving industry in general is that, uh, from what I hear, most companies require a satisfactory record of employment for at least six months before they will consider hiring anybody to drive a truck for them. So, in other words, <clears throat> sorry my voice is all raspy. It's from breathing in all those bleach fumes yesterday. I'm still getting over that. Uh, so, you know, I'm going to have to hold down a job for at least six months before... I go to apply to be a truck driver. Um, I'm still going to have to pass a DOT physical and everything else, which, you know, I don't, I don't feel worried about that. I don't feel intimidated about that. I feel like I could do it. Um, my knee, yes, it's, it's not what it used to be. And, you know, it's not, <clears throat> the whole ordeal is not over, but it is put on hold now. And, you know, it's not, it's not going to get any better than it is, but it's not going to get any worse as far as, you know, just completely putting me out of, you know, being able to work anytime soon. It's going to take a long time for my knee to need to be replaced. From looking at other cases that are similar to mine, it's not like I'm going to need a knee replacement six months from now. I might need one ten years from now, but it's not going to be anytime soon is what I'm trying to say. So... You know, I'm not that worried about doing a DOT physical. I'll do one. I'll do it all day. You know, I'll prove my worth. And <clears throat> so I'm just letting you guys know, you know, what I what I plan on doing in my near future. When I say near future, I mean within the next six months. It's the next six to 12 months. I want to be on the road in a truck driving this whole bank contractor thing i love the work um, i'm happy with it if it actually you know became more dependable than it is right now and it was more stable than it is right now and i had room to be promoted and move up and make more and more money i would probably stick with this kind of work but i just feel like you know i have more potential and I feel like I have more potential than being a truck driver, too. I'm not going to end my career endeavors there. This is just like stepping stones, you know. And that reminds me, the, the guy that I met a couple of days ago that told me about the Class B, the guy I said gave me advice about it, uh, him and his wife said something to me, and, and it's been in my head ever since they said it. What they said to me was, no matter what, don't ever let anyone tell you that you cannot do something. Now, obviously, 
you can't take that out of context and twist it and use it to to do evil things. But if you have a dream, if you have a goal, an aspiration, something that you are pursuing in your life that is positive, that you know is going to bring positive things into your life, positive things into others' lives, don't let any human being stand in your way and tell you that you can't do it. Now, I'm sure that there are other truck drivers out there that have had injuries far worse than mine that, are, that have used that to come to the field of truck driving, leave whatever they were doing before, say, I'm not going to do that to my body anymore. I'm not going to work like that anymore. I can't do it. It's not worth it. And then they come to the truck driving field and they get hired on, you know, despite being on workers' comp. So, you know, I, I'm not going to let what these people have said to me, you know, change my mind about driving a truck. I'm pretty, pretty set on it. And if I can get this Class B thing down and start driving as a Class B truck driver locally, then I'll, as far as I'm concerned, I'll have it made. And I have more long-term goals and more reasons why I want to do it like that than I will mention in this vlog. But we're talking about, you know, five to ten years down the road. I do have goals. There are things that I want to achieve in my lifetime. I do want to leave a mark. While I'm here on this earth, there are things that I want to do. I'm a creative person. I feel like I have a lot to offer uh, in the right timing, in the right setting. I feel like I have a lot to learn as far as, you know, being more productive with my creativity. There's a lot that I need to learn. There's a lot of experience that I need to gain. But what this is going to do is it's going to set me up for the future. And that's all I wanted to talk about in this vlog. This vlog is basically just me talking about work, you know, goals, passions. Obviously, I have a passion with videography. This, it's something that I plan on pursuing throughout my life. As technology evolves and time goes on, you know, I'm learning. I'm getting more and more familiar with this kind of thing. I enjoy it. I feel like it's a great outlet for me. I'm connected to it. It's a part of me. And so ultimately, I want to head in that direction in my occupational career endeavors. But we'll have to see how the next few years turn out. So I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. I hope you got something out of this vlog. If anything, I hope I motivated somebody and got some wheels turning in your head. If you're not already in that place, that's a good place to be in. Very good place to be in. But I just want to say stay positive. Don't ever let anybody tell you you can't do something that you want to do. As long as it's a good positive thing. And take care everybody. So on and so forth. Bye.